How's it going, guys? So, in this question, I am in this question. What the fuck am I saying right now? In the sense that, yeah, I usually make the YouTube MCQs here, but I'm responding to a question uh, someone has about going through QBank explanations. Okay, so uh, I've obviously put out a few here uh, on Amboss and New World and how to go through the QBanks, timed versus tutor, random, subject specific, how many questions per day, all that excellent information, okay? Student wants to know how to go through explanations and how to annotate, okay? So for example, should you be reading all the answer choices, including the ones that are wrong? Uh, should you be writing a little bit with each answer choice, making Anki, etc. okay? So can I give any uh, high yield tidbits, okay? Tips or tricks, holy shit. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, MHL man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram, links to Telegram group or channel down below. Now start the clip. Tips and tricks regarding how to go through QBank explanations and annotate if I think you should do that in 2023, okay? Any updated slash refined viewpoints. Obviously, I've made lots of YouTube uh, clips on this in the past, okay? Over 1,100 clips here on YouTube. I don't want you annotating, okay? Now that strikes some students as a surprise and they think that, well, you might not be able to pack the punch and retain information uh, as well as you could unless you are writing things down, okay? In my PDFs as an example, so you're doing, let's say, a cardio question in QBank. I say do things in random mode, but you get a cardio question, you get it wrong, then you can go to my cardio PDF, annotate it right there. Sounds reasonable. I don't think you need to annotate. I think it's a waste of time generally. Most things you write down in time as your uh, knowledge base improves, you're gonna look back and you'll be like, what was I thinking? It's gonna be a combination of what you wrote down was too easy slash hyper basic, and you'll kind of laugh at that. Or you're gonna look back and be like, I thought that was important. Okay, so you're gonna encounter a lot of factoids that are nonsense for you assimilate and you might annotate stuff down. I don't think you need to do that. I think you just need to read, okay? Some students like to make their Anki cards. Uh, some students really want to annotate. Look, I mean, if it's going to become an emotional process where you say, no, Mike, fuck you. Uh, I want to make Anki cards. Okay, you know, you're going to do your thing. But that's my advice. I don't think uh, for the majority of you watching this, uh, my students, I tell them, don't worry about annotating, okay? Just read the best you can uh, when you're going through QBank. Uh, just try to retain the information the best you can and recognize that remembering, forgetting, remembering, forgetting. That process is normal, uh, no matter how high you're scoring, okay? Now, in terms of explanations and how much you should delve into them, correct answer choice versus the incorrects, etc. This is annoyingly a gray area in that there are going to be some questions where, for example, let's say it's pericarditis uh, and you get it wrong, you chose cardiac tamponade, and then there's other answer choices like core pulmonale. All right, so there's high yield answer choices that, yes, you need to know how to distinguish between these high yield conditions. I do want you hardcore slash assiduously trying to memorize slash retain those explanations. I do want you uh, to index on those and, uh, and employ some effort. I want that. In contrast, let's say you get some nonsense biochemical slash molecular type question where it's a bunch of obscure enzymes. I don't give a fuck. Okay. So let's say it's McCardle syndrome and uh, muscle glycogen phosphorylase, myophosphorylase deficiency. And then you see a bunch of other uh, weird enzymes that are outside the glycogen storage diseases or in, and lysosomal storage diseases. You know, it's a, uh, we're venturing in a territory where Step one, because it's no longer numerical, waste of fucking time, okay? So when you're going through QBank, what I'm mostly focused on is you fulfilling your quota of questions in a day. I've talked about 40 to 80 per day. I don't want you doing more than 80. I don't want you doing fewer than 40 questions. So you need to get the quota finished. And the same way when you go through a singular question and you're self-pacing and you kind of gauge, you say subjectively gauge, well, I think I'm spending too long on this question. When you're doing QBank, you say, well, I've only got 
e.g. two and a half hours uh, left that I can study right now, and I've got X number of questions left, you have to pace accordingly. There's no fucking excuses. All right, so short point of consolidation here is, and it's not dramatic, okay? I mean, no, I don't want you annotating. Some people will disagree. Some people, you know, you want to make your Anki cards. Not what I recommend. Don't need to annotate. And in terms of explanations, you have to subjectively ask yourself, you know, do these sound like high yield diagnoses I see somewhat repeatedly? If yes, make sure you know those explanations really, really well. Otherwise, for the uh, nonsense type answer choices, embryologic, garbage, etc., you quickly breeze. I don't want you skipping, but you quickly breeze and then, but not OCD, okay? Don't get too bogged down in uh, nonsense. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content. I feel like my stuff, subscribe my channel. Appreciate your time. That's it.